What are you doing? What are you looking at, Cousin Ryan? Uh, well, I was just looking at this 1976 magazine. That's a good year. Canapolis. Well, I know. I was, <laughs> it was nine years before I was born, but other than that, you know, uh, talking about how Canapolis had two radio stations, WRKB and WGTL, which, you know, that stood wow. for World's Greatest Textile Land. No kidding. That's what it stood for. Man. And here we are in WRKB's old studio. Wow. Today. That's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of good stuff in this little magazine. Huh. You know what I'm reading? What's that? Canapolis Citizen. That's oh, a pretty yeah. good paper. It was a good paper. I miss that paper a lot. No kidding. I feel like, you know, last week we talked about the Daily Independent. This week, the Canapolis Citizen. And Well, man, you ready to get this I'm episode ready. two? All right, let's do it, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, hello again, once again. Uh, I'm Chris Hughes. I'm Ryan Davalt. And uh, we're here for the K-Town Connection. Um, we've got a great, great show coming to you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the lineup here in a minute. But, man, uh, feedback from last week, episode one. I, my phone hasn't stopped buzzing, my Facebook, my social. Uh, what about you? Same for me, man. It's It was great. I think a lot of people enjoyed it, even though it was just you and I. Uh, but here today, this is what it's all about, about okay. somebody else and bringing people on and exposing our community no kidding uh, i think the people from around town is really going to like that and you know i think we got some cool little things to to kind of uncover in this little interview we've got scheduled here in a moment but, but man i was looking around town man there's a lot of things going on around canapolis this week a lot of things going around town you know one thing that's going to kind of stick kind of stuck out to me uh speed limit on main street changed yeah man 20 miles per hour now but from north loop road to dale earnhardt boulevard and I've had people, people at work today was complaining about that <laughs> too. So uh, it is going to take some time people getting used to that. It, I mean, it used to be when we were kids, the old days, it was 20 miles per hour, just the way it is now. So, uh, you know, it's all for safety for people crossing the streets. A lot of people downtown now, and uh, I, it does slow people down, but it's hard to go 20 miles per hour. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I hope my friend Terry Spry don't get too mad at me, but I think I did 35 today, so i got to uh, get that check. I did too, but, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing my Cannonballer shirt. Uh, the opening week of the 2024 uh, baseball uh, kicks off this week. Uh, the Cannonballers open the season tomorrow night. That's Friday, April the 5th. Uh, on the road against Charleston, the home opener will be here in town next Tuesday, April the 9th, against the Augusta Green Jackets. You know, by the way, next weekend, Augusta, you know, they're going to give away a green jacket. Oh, no, that's true. Big time golf event, the Masters. Uh, but anyway, first pitch is going to be at 6 o'clock uh, next Thursday night, um, Tuesday night. Uh, we will have fireworks after the game, so that's going to be a big deal. Uh, going to be a lot of cars in town. You know, traffic's yeah. already kind of crazy in town, which is a really good thing. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but, man, parking's going to be at a premium. It is. And, you know, one of the things that the Swanee Theater, of course, is hosting events during the week now, which, mm -hmm. you know, that's a big change from how it has been yeah. from kind of a weekend event place. So on Monday nights, you have line dancing, yep. you know, on Tuesday nights, you have the dance walk party. Yeah. Wednesday nights, you have a shag group yeah. being there. So especially for Tuesday and Wednesday night, yeah. at parking, if you're attending all those events or any of those events, probably need to get here super early and just kind of hang out. Yeah, no kidding. No kid. Uh, I kind of going back to the cannonballers. You see the baseball swag here, kind of in the background. Uh, we got some um, really historic cannon or Piedmont bull weevil uh, towel here behind us. Um, and we have to carry Earnhardt. We, we do. Car out we front. carry Earnhardt. We've got the, the bobbleheads. Uh, but speaking of the cannonballers, there's a new podcast. I've seen it on social media. Talking yeah. ballers um, with Trevor Will. Um, Jordan Cannell, um, that's going to be pretty cool. I guess maybe they saw our idea and they're running with it too. <laughs> it's pretty cool to have two podcasts, you know, Canapolis based. Of course, they'll be, I'm sure, focused on Cannonballers and we're a little bit broader. But um, it, that'll be great to have them to talk to and, and partner with uh, with us in many ways, hopefully. Yeah, so. no kidding. We are each week here in the K-Town Connection podcast. Uh, we will bring you some Cannonballer news, try to keep you up to date with the standings here within the league. Uh, maybe bring some of the management, bring maybe a player or two. Who knows? We're going to have yeah. some fun. Uh, it's our local team, you know, just like any media entity, we're going to go out there and cover them just like we would, you know, A.L. Brown Athletics or anything else here in the community. Uh, you mentioned the Swanee Theater. Uh, man, if you haven't been to the Swanee guys, I implore you 
you to go check it out. Uh, the Swanee Theater .com. Um, Blue Monday this Saturday. That's a great rock and roll group. Uh, we got a guy coming in here in a minute that probably is going to talk some rock and roll. Yeah. Um, uh, that that look really cool. I was checking it out on the website. Uh, here in a couple weeks, you got The Woods, which is an Irish Irish folk music band. And here in a couple weeks, the Zach Brown Band tribute band. I think that's going to be pretty be cool. Big. Be big. And something I know you and I like. There's some '90s country coming here it's pretty soon. Coming. It's coming. That's going to be a big night too. And so I, that's what I'm most most uh, excited about. So. I might I might have to get out the old rough talk voice for that you one. Might. You <laughs> might. Oh man! Well, that's almost what's going on around town. Um, I did notice the streets were closed off. The gym theater they were moving some stuff in there. I don't know what's going on, but I think we'll have our our beautiful uh, nas uh, national historic theater opened up soon. It looks really good. Yeah, I've seen pictures online. I've not been in there myself, but pictures online show it really shaping up really nicely. So a lot of people are excited about that. <laughs> well, man, hey, people can listen to us talk all day. In fact, we had quite a few watched us rough talk each other last week. <laughs> but, Ryan, who the heck are we going to rough talk tonight? So tonight we're going to go for a guy who a lot of people in town know. I mean, he's, a, he's just a great guy, number one. Number two, he's well known for – running all over the town exercising he's a great runner always been active member of first baptist church just a phenomenal guy chuck Irvin. chuck Irvin, who was also has another name Man, that he I, goes I, by I, I'll, I'll call him by that we'll, number of another name we'll 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 let you call him that because uh you you were you were alive when he was doing that i was just <laughs> what are you being saying I'm old? i was just being born what are you saying, saying i'm old i'm not I, a boomer i'm I mean, a gen I, x guy I'm, I'm just you know i'm just saying you want me to rough talk you i mean Hey, Might as well. Drink some sun drop. All right, I will. All right. And as always, this local break's brought to you by our favorite sun drop, the official beverage of K Town Connection. Sun drop, citrus taste, we go wild for. Citrus taste, who goes wild for? Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt. Three for Dale. <laughs> All right. Hey, I think it's time that we bring in our first um, guest ever here on the K Town Connection. Uh, many of you guys might have known him as Dr. Dave from Z100. Uh, hey, Dave, you outside? Dr. Dave is in the house. All right. Man, look at that. A few things to cover and talk about. Oh, oh that'd be, that'd man. That'd be great. Look at man. that. <laughs> we'll talk about all of it if you want to. We got How a week. Good to see you. Good to see What's you. What's up, Dr. Dave? Sir. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's amazing. Uh the ceiling tiles are still the same in the so, hall out there as they were from the Well, seven. I was going to say, welcome to our studio, but you've been in this studio a whole lot longer before we were. Uh, that's true. And it's just nothing's changed. You know, control room is still on the door. I mean, you've fixed it up nice and everything, but Lord have mercy. It's just it's just awesome. The production room, the newscast room, the offices where the general manager had and everything that's wow. so cool it is very very an honor on my part to be here well you being our first guest we couldn't think about anybody else i mean somebody that was connected to the physical space being a huge priority for for us to get you in here and we really appreciate you being here well thank you very much i gotta very ask happy. you this i was in here i remember what it felt like the first time ryan brought me up here it's been well over a year ago mm -hmm. before we started planning this show uh, I was in here the first time Carl Ford was up here. You know, obviously Carl Ford and right. um, the girl. We graduated TV. together. Yes, you did. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Also with my mom, Kathy yes, Donald. That's right. That's right, Kathy. And, um, hey, and I'm just going to throw this shameless plug out for my mom. If you guys are fans of Kannapolis, get yeah. on there and look at the Gotham's City <laughs> to City. Uh, <laughs> Kathy Gotham, Dave Gotham, uh, they're, they're Kannapolis residents, but they travel the whole country in their RV, and they put some really cool uh, – some cool videos out there, and they got some really nice ones they give already. Him traveling Robert to run yep. for his they, money. They might get Traveling Robert to run for his money. Uh, so check that out. You know, that's uh, proud graduates of the A.O. Brown class of 75. Wow. That's it. That's Don't seem like that long ago. Almost 50 year reunion. Man, it, it, it's time flies. It is. Uh, but I mentioned Carl. I was in here the first time he saw, and I could just kind of see the, the elation or, or just the look on his face when he came up here because I could tell this place meant a lot to him and, you know, his childhood growing up. Uh, I know what it sounded to me as a child growing up listening to you and some of the others on air. But now coming back into this place, I don't know, 40 years later, what, what kind of a memories did it evoke when you walked in this door? And walking up those stairs. Yeah, that know? was That's the, the highlight is walking up the steel staircase and, and just down that hallway. 
And uh, when you'd see WRKB on the glass door, and then you'd walk in and see uh, all through the windows, mm-hmm. uh, see them live on the air, and uh, it was it was really something that got me interested in radio, yeah. and uh, I was just uh, thrilled to be a part of it, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was it was really really a cool time in my life. You know, we got another guy that we want to get on here really soon, uh, and a good friend of mine, Randy Whitley, who you know he was probably in here doing news of Kannapolis long, long before I was ever around. And, you, you know, he still got those golden pipes and just so great behind the air, so smooth. But I'd love to get him in here as well. He is. he He's awesome. He was our news guy here. And uh, he just fell in with everything from WRKB to when we moved over to Fairview Street and uh, we changed the call letters. Well, WRKB stayed over on the country and the gospel side and we became FM 100. Uh, Randy uh, was part of that. He went by the name of Paul Winston. That's right. And uh, and one thing just led to another. He w- he was just all a part of that. And Randy has always, until this day, been part of uh, of Canapolis and yes. the history of radio in Canapolis. Right. You know, he's doing A.L. Brown football. Right. Voice and of the Wonders. That's exactly right. And so, he he will he he loves this town as does. much as. As all three of us. So how did you get to be from Chuck Irvin, you know, somebody who was a kid around town to becoming Dr. Dave working in the studio years ago? Well, um, it, it just kind of evolved a little bit. Uh, I started at a young age uh, working at the gym theater. And uh, the guys from the radio station, Gary Moss, Gary Walker, um, Bill Biggerstaff, and uh, those guys would come down by the theater and grab some popcorn drink or a snack or something, you know. So I got to talking to them, and uh, I said, I'd like to come up and see the radio station sometime. So, um, oh, yeah, come on up. So I started bringing them popcorn up here and hanging around the studios and got into the control room. And then uh, from there, it just went, uh, well, can you help us out uh, a little Saturday? Can you play these tapes? Or mm-hmm. Sunday morning, can you play the ministers? would come in and, and have their half hour, uh, Curtis Parker and, and, uh, those guys would have their radio prog- gotcha. broadcast and all they needed was somebody to run the board. So that's where it evolved to. And then, uh, uh, got to start doing, uh, uh, some weekends and stuff. And, the, and that was back when, um, uh, originally when, uh, I know you know, these names, uh, Foy Henson and mm-hmm. Gertrude Henson. Mm-hmm. He owned the radio station. He was an engineer, and she ran the modern record shop mm-hmm. downtown. Right. And uh, together, they owned the radio station. And then uh, later, they sold it to Bill Hefner, who uh, later became uh, Congress, I believe he was Congress, Congressman, Congressman yeah. Hefner. And uh, he was with the Harvesters Quartet. So he was big in gospel music, and he hired uh, Jeanette Kenley and uh, John Stiles and uh, Dwight Barker doing the bluegrass shows. And they put all of that together and eventually built a station over on Fairview Street. And that's where we all kind of moved over there. And then the station was sold to uh, Paul Downs. Uh, he was a fine gentleman and uh, he stayed with it a year or so. And uh, we were FM 100. Uh, we dropped the 99.7 and went to FM 100. He changed the call letters and we went to WJZR. And WRKB retained their call letters and just became WRKB AM 1460. And uh, they would, uh, we had that building split where the FM control rooms were on one side of the building and you could look through the grass, glass and see uh, the AM broadcasting. Carl was over there and all of those guys, and, and they were doing two, mm-hmm. two different broadcasts from two different stations. Mm-hmm. And wow. um, so uh, luckily, um, uh, after Mr. Downs, uh, he uh, wanted to bring in some uh, different people and different things, so they went and... Uh, uh, picked up a uh, guy named Bob Chrysler, R.C. Chrysler, and he came in. And this was with, back in the early 80s when uh, uh, we were trying to really go after them. We were trying to 
uh, I guess for a better word, to uh, kind of look like we were the FM station mm-hmm. of the old big ways, yeah. Radio 61. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were going to be the uh, hot flashing, hard rocking, uh, high energy, up tempo. Everything we did was 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 high energy. Well, let's let's not go too far ahead because I'm going to take you back okay. a little bit uh, because we're kind of getting into my childhood right there. All right. You know, one of the reasons that Ryan and I have created this podcast is, is to give to the community, you know, want to tell the stories of some people that are here before us and, and kind of keep people abreast with the news. Uh, but I remember the the news stations here in Kannapolis, you know, talking about the radio news station. And, you know, we talked about the Daily Independent last week, but to the people growing up, people living here in Kannapolis in the 60s and 70s and probably well before, how important was this radio station to the town? Uh, it was really important. Uh, like, um, we had a private line like the, the the high school would call in or the superintendent would call in and say, hey, there's going to be no school tomorrow because of snow. And and back then, you know, that was a big thing around oh, yeah. here uh, because there was no way to get it out. You know, Channel 3 and Channel 9 really wasn't into uh, looking after the small town of Kannapolis. And, and we were just, uh, we did the high school football. We were a community station. We did the, uh, the Christmas parades. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were a voice in the community, and it was uh, it was a cool time, and yeah, very my, excited. My mom's always talked about driving by when she was growing up. You know, this that was her era too, and seeing the guys that were broadcasting, they would holler out the windows and you know yell at people driving by, and you know, and people. She of course knew those guys, Gary Moss yeah, and all yes. those guys, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, I've heard those names my my right. life, my right. life. You know, yeah, just from her. I'm talking about the Christmas parade. I remember when the Kannapolis Christmas parade was a big, big deal. And I mean, it's pretty good now. But back in them days, when oh. it started all the way at the Waterburger and went all the way through town, I imagine hanging out the windows of this radio station. You you had the best view of the parade. Oh, oh yeah. you did. Yeah, it was just had the best view <laughs> of everything. You know, people walking by, going to the theater across the street to the church, uh, walking back and forth to the mill and uh, around mm-hmm. the lake and it was just uh, if you had the view of the daily independent mm-hmm, right. and all of those things it was Did, it was an awesome view speaking of the mill you know they always had their shift changes at mm-hmm. 11 at night three in the afternoon and early in the morning at seven for their first uh you know of course we had the whistle blow and you know we love to romanticize <laughs> about that and the whistle still blows by the way uh here in Kannapolis. uh if you guys didn't know it just go by the swanee theater every friday afternoon at five and ken lingafeld blows that whistle religiously on the hour of five that every is so week cool. it yeah. is really cool um but did you guys broadcast at night did y'all have like a night shift or did we did uh we would broadcast the latest that, that, that we ever broadcasted out of this studio here was midnight. We would do like the old TV stations. Mm-hmm. We would sign off at midnight and then we would start back up the next morning at 6 a.m. What'd you sign and, off uh, with? We would sign off with the uh, Star Spangled Banner yeah, yeah. and uh, then it just go quiet. You just mm-hmm. go in and turn the transmitter off and wow. you know, let it rest. Yeah, and I remember WGTL was cool. when they would sign off at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It was a Lord's Prayer, I think, right, is what, right. what he always did. Fred Whitley, right? And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and that clear channel, you know, clear channel, yes. <laughs> was, yeah. you could hear it for woo, yeah, way yeah. out across. Yes. Wow. Well, well, we're going to get back up now to we're in our timeline. We're about 1982, 83, somewhere around in there. Uh, you mentioned Chrysler, and you mentioned going to the FM and doing the one, the 100. And and I don't know if it's a pickup. On there, we might have to edit it in after the, but the Z100 logo, and this is the sound of my childhood growing up here in Kannapolis. You know, you would call in, and kids would call into the radio station, hey, can you play some ACDC or some Michael Jackson or whatever the case might have been at that day. Uh, these stickers were everywhere. Like, I remember going to Skateland USA up in North Kannapolis, and kids would have it on their roller skate box and on the back of their car. This Z100 sticker was the thing to have in your possession in the 80s. It was. It was a great time. Uh, we were active in the community, and uh, the groups like Sugar Creek were hot then. And uh, it was just, uh, you had uh, the clubs around. We had the Charlotte connection, but we were the Kannapolis yes. connection also. And uh, we just had everybody listening to us. It was just amazing. Uh, the restaurants and and you'd be out somewhere and mm-hmm. oh, we're listening to you. And we were you know we were twenty four seven rocking, uh, 
you know, and uh, well, can you play Quiet Riot at <laughs> 9 a.m. in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> so how did, how did Dr. Dave come about? Well, um, I got my start by, uh, like I said, in the door. I was not a big name uh, person that they were trying to fill in, but I was, uh, luckily, I was at the right place at the right time where there was not a, a demand for a 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, <laughs> on the air person. And I got my start with Z100 doing 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. And so uh, the voices and the powers that be, we, some of us had radio names and some of them had common names, uh, the, the original names. It was, you know, some of like Panama Jack. We had Panama Jack. We had Animal R.O. Boogie. The Van Man. The Van Man. And, but his name was Van Radford. But you had but, Jack yeah, Daniels, too. And we had Jack Daniels, too. He came later after I left. And uh, But, yes, you had, uh, and, and Bob Chrysler, you know, that's his real name. And and we just had an awesome group of, of personalities. And uh, so it, someone come up with a uh, Dr. Dave Dunaway. And um, I said, I could be cool with Dr. Dave. And somebody come up uh, and said, well, here's your cool intro. And so the rest was history. And wow. uh, I ended up uh, <laughs> doing overnights for a long period and then moved up to some middays. And I uh, had a very nice time. Uh, and then I think I outgrew it a little bit. Well, and of course, they moved to Charlotte and yeah, right. the rest was there. I, I'm going to tell you, it's a sad day. And I remember this day very well. I think it was 86, I, I think was the year. But I remember, you know, we listened. My mom had a blue Ford Granada. Love that car. And, you know, you had the button, you pushed, and it went to 100. And we had to settle on Z100. And that's the only station we ever listened to. And for about a day or two, it was nothing but static. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, like 99.7, the Fox. And, you know, they started getting into the whole John Boy and Billy thing. And they, they rough talked us. They, they pushed the Z100 out. And, you know, it was 99.7. But I remember that. And, and it, I felt like we did lose now our hometown station. Now, of course, even to this day, 99.7 says Canapolis, Charlotte's Fox, or right. whatever. But, you know, we had, licensed here. Yeah, we had our hometown station that, that just kind of went away. It, it did. And, uh, it was, um, I guess, they were available. You know, they had, they were uh, parting with WBCY, which was 107.9, where they were originally there. And uh, so they hired the, those guys to do the morning show here. Well, they would drive to Kannapolis every day, and Rayford, would, you know, was with them. So Robert D. Rayford would come up and uh, do his uh, show from here. And this went on uh, as they built a studio in Charlotte for about a year. Hmm. And so they broadcasted from Kannapolis wow. uh, for about a year with John Boy and Rayford and, and, cool. uh, as the Fox as we, when they changed that. Then, like you said, it was about 86 or 87 that they moved to their Charlotte facilities. Who would have known? John Boy and Billy right here. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, during the uh, 80s uh, and 90s, there wasn't nothing bigger. I mean, no, that was right. a, and they expanded all throughout the Southeast. In fact, I was in the Army at Fort Hood, Texas, and they were syndicated in Texas as well then. I think they're still they're, kicking today. They are, and they're still, still kicking. And, uh, yeah. I think he's 67, 68 years old, and he's just as uh, as funny today as he was yeah, no kidding. 40 yeah. years ago. Oh, you got you know, faces for radio like we got. You know, hey, you keep going for a long time. That's exactly right. Uh, but speaking of radio, I'm going to put you on the spot, Dr. Dave. And I want to hear that Z100 intro. And I, we we got to hear it. You still have it in you to give us a little bit of well, Dr. It's, Dave. It's been a long time, but, uh, you know, uh, like I, I uh, it's told Ryan, I said, uh, we had a lot of reverb back then, and it was just high energy. And, and they wanted you to... Their words were sing the call letters, and they wanted to. to they wanted Z one hundred, you know, and uh, you know the best of to come this hour. We've got uh, the Temptations, we've got ACDC, we've got the Rolling Stones, you know, and it was just all high energy. You would do the weather, you know, mostly sunny today, high of seventy five, clear and cold tonight, low of forty five. It's forty three now at the Z, and bam, that, that sounds, wow. that sounds great. great. <laughs> and uh, it was just that they wanted you to give a quick three second weather forecast. Uh, and we, you know, we would walk up the intros of the song, you know, and uh, uh, that was 
the carts were labeled, you know, like uh, intro starts in 10 seconds and you had to count down clock and it would show you that uh, you had 10 seconds to walk it up to wow. the singing. And that, that was that high energy. I there. think that is one of the most coolest things in radio. That's one of the <laughs> things I've always said that it changes the whole dynamic of radio is, is DJs talking up songs, leading into songs, the jingles, the intros. I mean, everybody listens to Spotify and all these other right. streaming things, but I would much rather hear a live person hype up that song or hype up yep. what's coming and tell the weather live. It, you know, it, it's right. a completely different experience. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to make the weather interesting, but yet you you don't want to delve into it. You yeah. know that it's windy and uh, yeah. what's coming. You know, just tell them what to expect the next little bit, and uh, you walk up your ten second song and you hit the post, and bam, they're singing, and uh, and, and that was what we were after was. Uh, uh, no, no silence. Everything is right. just wow. moving right along at a high uh, pitch face. Well, again, you know, we're here with Doctor Dave. Chuck Irvin from Z100 here on the K Town Connection. Uh, all right, here, here's your task. You got like two seconds to figure it out. You got Ryan, myself, you know us both. K Town Connection, give us a little 10 second intro. How would you tell the world about what we got going on? Wow. Well, let's see. Uh, well, we're at Z100 today. We're live and, and, and remote in downtown Kannapolis. We're here just across from the Core Lab, across from First Baptist Church. We've got Chris Hughes and and Ryan Davalt. They're in the studio today, and we're going to have a little history lesson with them and let them tell us all about growing up in Kannapolis. Wow. Wow. You're hired. Yeah. yeah. We're going to clip that, that, and we're going to play that for like the next <laughs> decade in this podcast. Or, or we need to record him doing all these weather weather reports you know every every episode give a weather report like that well, so cool i'm glad you mentioned you know being across from the core lab and first baptist church you know like us you've been in this town for for seemingly forever born and um, raised here. You, you you've seen it change from idiot circle to you know going up in this the late 50s i guess the 60s to the 70s um you, you've seen it when the late 90s early 2000s when quite frankly there wasn't anything here and, and now to Correct. see, you know, what, uh, you know, some of, um, you know, and I'm going to tip my hand, uh, people like Kent Gregory and Ken Lingefeld and, you know, the Kannapolis Retail Ventures and all the people that brought a lot of commerce back to the town that allowed some of our local government to take advantage of that and really do some cool, cool things in this town. And the growth has been astonishing. But what, what, what do you think about where the town's at? And like, how do you feel from going from there to here? Well, it's interesting you say that. Uh, we were just talking out in the hall a few minutes ago. Um, we bought a house a block from here, and we love it downtown. We, we're in town every day. Uh, we go to church across the street at First Baptist Church. Uh, the gym theater's here, the chop house. It's just so much of a, a, a walkable town, a doable town uh, with the horseshoe and everything. Uh, St. Patrick's Day was a blast Amazing. here. The biggest crowd, you know, where I live across the track here, uh, cars parked on the other side of the energy plant <laughs> that you never see. And it, it's just, I mean, when even when it was a busy night, the ballers went in town, chop house was hopping, the armor was hopping, uh, the theater had a big name movie you, you it was always busy but it was really you you can really tell the last couple of months how things are going and it's just uh it, it's just amazing and uh i am just thrilled to death to be here in this part of town and uh and and see uh this transformation that's awesome it is yeah and you know hearing it from somebody like you it yeah. really makes Makes me feel good as a council member, obviously, having something to do with all this. But uh, it makes me feel good that the efforts haven't been just for newcomers. I mean, that you're a representative of the way Kannapolis was and someone who wants to be here now and and you know, made a pointed effort to be literally in the middle of it by buying right. your house. I mean, right. you didn't you didn't have to buy a house there. That, that's know? exactly <laughs> right. I mean, uh, we we just loved what they were doing here. And, and I remember, uh, you know, 20 years ago, we'd come uptown to walk the dog. Uh, 
we would be the only two people downtown right. on Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon. We could come up here and spend 30 minutes walking the dog and never see another soul. Mm -hmm. And um, it was A lot of people just don't told, believe that. No, no, yeah. they, uh, <laughs> they do not. I mean, uh, we might, I, I can remember in that two or three block area, we might not have but three open businesses. Mm -hmm. right? That's and, right. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, so the, I am not complaining about condos and homes and Media. any other thing they build them all and that's exactly right you know it's 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 for the market now and the market is leaning toward those things and that's what's thriving you know uh, you know 10 years ago and i love concord but 10 years ago i thought concord was the most awesome place i ever seen where's that at but, <laughs> yeah, where? i don't know where that's at <laughs> but to me they don't hold a candle to anything we got we've got the uh it's just uh, if you've never been here, no wonders yeah that's right <laughs> i mean we're right here the carousel is placed at the right place the train track all of the the amphitheater all of that look at the area and the growth that you have and it's just not uh, and it's all walkable. Yeah, we were we were blessed with a very planned out community from the beginning, 1906 till now. It, it, everything kind of centered around downtown, whether it was That's the mill right. or the downtown itself. And we still and we've been able to bring that back, which is a just a phenomenal achievement for all parties involved. Our yes. private folks that that Chris just mentioned. We couldn't have done it without them, and and you know our government has spent a lot of effort to do this, and and it shows, and, and yeah. it shows, and we're uh, just very proud that people like you that can actually enjoy it. Yeah, well, uh, it, and appreciate it, it. it is. Uh, I can't thank you enough for what you've done and the foresight, and it's this takes planning. This doesn't happen overnight, and and uh, it's it's an awesome thing to see. Um, and where the next building goes up and all hands on deck. I mean, it, yeah. you just, it's fast paced. It, it's yeah. fast paced. <laughs> and you know, all the people that's been involved in it and, and it's, you know, there's been a lot of challenges along the way, but we've, we've made it through and mm -hmm. that's the main thing. Kannapolis is yep. resilient. It all, is. We always thought we were redheaded stepchild with other communities across the lake over there and yeah. they just kept building up and then when you'd come back here it was just uh low and slow uh, but uh it, it's it's after z100 left yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, that, that's where all the hype <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> but just about every morning on channel 36 larry sprinkle shows the view from the cannonball that's stage right. that's, that's awesome. every morning uh, like i that. mean it, you can tell that you yes. know charlotte has taken notice of our beautiful little community up here and you know again that's yes. why ryan and i do what we do you know we both grew up here we love this town just as you do and, and a, lot of, a lot of other people that follow what we do and and you know that's evident by the you know just amount of positive feedback that we got from last week's show that Ryan and I did just by ourselves. Right. You know, people want to hear what's going on here in the town, which is why we did it because we love this town and you know, it's just got so much to offer. So, you know, that's it. I couldn't be happier for where our town's at. You know, I think there's a lot of growth and a, and a lot out there that I'm hoping to be a part of in the next couple of years, but to see where we've come from and, you know, to still romanticize about, you know, the way it used to be, but it's kind of my my motto that I use with everything here in Kannapolis, you know, and I'm, I stole it from Coach Bruce Harden at A.O. Brown. But we got a past to build upon, but we got a future here to fulfill. And, you know, that's what we try to do every day. Oh, that's awesome. And, and you know, uh, it's the little things like who would have thought that years ago building the train station and having an Amtrak stop here in Kannapolis and even getting our own engine right. that says City of Kannapolis on it, you know, I, I just sit there on the porch at night and see that city of Kannapolis 1984 engine go by, and you, you wonder what do the visitors think when they come into this town and see what's evolved here, and then they see their own Amtrak train. Mm -hmm. It's like we've got our own yeah. train service. Right. Yeah. Cool. I, you know, and you talk about the train. I've had numerous people say, and I've rode the train to Raleigh one mm -hmm. time, came back, you know, and but I've had numerous people say that that entire stretch including going into charlotte when you come in and out of Kannapolis, it's the prettiest yeah. town to come in and out yeah. of on oh, the, the whole route, on the whole route. i mean it's <laughs> I it's so different and so yeah. impressive and that that's so cool to get that feedback yeah. and i've told that's your awesome. lovely wife at work that if you guys ever decide to sell that house i would like the first time <laughs> you need to buy it that's or if you know of any of your neighbors are moving like give me a call like i want to jump in on it because oh, like again awesome. right there i mean oh, literally 
Eight he's a feet. train guy. Yeah, yes. I love trains. Yeah. So literally like 80 feet from where your house is is where like our great-great-grandfather lived right there on the corner at Ridge yeah. Avenue. So, you right. know, that meat area is just so important, you know, right here behind us on the street. So yeah. important. And, you know, it I, is. I think you're talking about how things change through time. You know, this podcast, Chris and I have talked about this for a long time and trying to do something. It's always been my goal in life to sometime or another own a radio station. I because I love the radio. I, I you know I restore antique radios. Mm -hmm, I right. for homes, cars, you know all this stuff. But of course the the development and the process of radio and and the production and just the touching so many people with it, whether it's the music or or the DJs as yourself, that all is so cool. But a podcast now is kind of the way. It has essentially replaced papers in a lot of ways. And of course, Correct. there's other ways to get uh, news out, but this is a way a lot of people would like to receive their information. And that's why we've chosen to do this first. Maybe at some point, he and I together, or, or uh, all three of us, maybe we we may be able to. I'd love to be able to buy the call letters WGTL and bring that back to. Oh, well, that would be cool. And I mean, they're they're not assigned, right? So they're uh, you know, it's a matter of getting the FCC to release them again but i i would just love to have something like that for this whole region to have that live music that live kind of back just, to your roots a back bit. to the roots you know? and you just have that local flair yeah. and now you really have the local flair yeah, that's right that, that that back then you know you had the mill workers going to work and mm -hmm. and you talked about the whistle you know the whistle would blow every morning at 5 30 and that's time to get up uh, it would blow again at 20 minutes to right. seven. You know, you've got 20 minutes to get to your job, and then it'd blow again at seven o'clock. And and I grew up. And if you're not there, we're going to rough talk you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The red light flash. <laughs> That's right. I remember that red light. I worked in the mill for a short time. I remember that well. But yeah, we and, and you know, thinking about it and thinking about the things, our initiatives here with the K Town Connection. And, you know, like our, our collaborations with people like Ken Lingefeld and the Swanee Theater, you know, what what a great thing a radio station could do. We talked about some of these bands coming, you know, Blue Monday this week, The Woods, Zach Brown Tribute, radio station work on remote over there to Swanee, oh, yeah. promoting the people coming right. through. You're helping right. the bands, you're helping the town, Do a live remote dinner oh, like we gosh, used to. You know, we're live on location Man, at the yes. Swanee Theater. No, kidding. Be so cool. <laughs> You know, I, I just think that would just take tonight. To we've got the other. Tams in town. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah, no it's, kidding. Uh, it's it's awesome. And you know, there's still stations out there. Uh, Five fifty a.m. in Statesville does a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Sixty three big ways in uh, Hickory. Right. It's you know, it's all the old format. Does a phenomenal job. There's still stations out there that independently are owned by people. Billy Buck, the folks that own the ride, the surf, the, the surf in North Myrtle Beach, of course, Carl Ford, you know, WRKB. Right, I mean, right. there's still there's still that local source, but so much of it's commercialized and, and nationalized. And that's how radio has lost its connection to people. And that's why people have chosen to listen to Spotify and all these other things because they have no connection to it. But if you give them a reason to listen, like, correct, look what's coming to your town because people are dying to know what's happening. And, and and I think you're seeing with this younger demographic, even younger than myself, you know, the 20s and 30s and, you know, this next group of movers and shakers that, you know, they're they're cutting the cords of their TVs. They're getting yes. rid of the, ca the cable. Uh, they're moving out. You know, used to be everybody went to Applebee's and Red right. Lobster. Hey, nobody wants to go to those places no, anymore. People want to come downtown. Right. And I think that today, you know, I think that some of it's nostalgia, but I think some of it's just people want to reconnect with their roots and, and get back to where we used to be. You've nailed it. The, uh, they're... They don't want to own a house, you know. Uh, they want to be able to go and move and pick up and do and enjoy the daily life. And this is exactly what uh, their expectations are. Right. And uh, this is not meant for my age group. Uh, it's it's meant for the younger group that enjoys the uh, getting out and seeing it and being with friends and bowling and doing those types of things. Slot car, they, you know, they mm -hmm. introduced them to slot car, and a lot of them never even knew what slot car were. Right. It's so cool to go into Man. the slot car track. I'm going to tell you, we were, we were at the slot car track 
Tuesday night. Ryan right. was there racing. It's one of the few nights Ryan didn't win, yeah. matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, but you'd be amazed. I mean, there's a lot of people there, people of all well, different ages. I mean, yeah. it's not just an older people thing, and it's not a young people. I mean, everybody. They're amazed. They they, they, they have never been around it. Yeah. You know, and it's just to go in and see something like that and see it live, that's something like you would and, play a video game. Yeah, right. Or there's so many other businesses here in town that people are, that is exploding me. Oh. My kids can't spend enough money at the boba store besides <laughs> slot car track you know my, i've got um their line the other they, day was uh, just no, unbelievable I, no kidding I, what's on sale over there and, they were like 20 people and, in line you know there. my sponsors that, that sponsor carolina preps and and even us here at the uh you know or sam falls yeah. and, and caleb falls and falls Jane jewelers or or um Mike here at HPT, high performance training. You know, you go to these places, and I mean, they're bustling. You can't get, you yeah. can't even get in sometimes. And you know, that's just again this renaissance that this town is having. That's just so incredible. And you're right. And 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 you look uh, at what Ryan's wife Tracy is doing a couple of nights a week downtown with these uh, at the different venues, uh, doing the one hour classes yeah. with the ladies. And and you know I mean when Sherry comes home she's she just loves it she just yeah. chats about what has happened for the last hour and yeah. it, it's it's awesome yeah, that it's you great. can have that downtown yeah, I mean, walk to that right if I wasn't um, happily attached and and I've I found a great one don't 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 kid yourself about that <laughs> but I'll tell you what I've been there running the lights for Tracy's show at the Swanee and every woman in town's there that'd be a great place <laughs> if you're a single man you might want to go check out Tracy's show you may learn to do some uh, some, some dancing. <laughs> That's why you and Ryan were there last week. Running the lights. Yeah, there right. you go. There you go. Well, uh, Dr. Dave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you finish off. Hey, one last little Dr. Dave uh, soundbite for us right so, here. Yeah, so how did you close yeah, how, your, how, your shows? I mean, can you close us out? or? Uh... Well, I don't really remember how we would uh, close things out too much. Uh, we, a lot of people will uh, trade off, you know, you'll come in and uh, here's Chris Hughes uh, with what he's got next hour, mm. you know, or I would basically not have a handoff to yeah. him, but I'll say, uh, you know, that's it for me today, guys. Uh, stick around. Chris Hughes yeah. has got more from ACDC, uh, Poison, yeah. Quiet Riot, all to come, and he's got tickets to go see Sugar Creek yes. Live. And here we go. Chris Hughes coming to you on the air, and I'm going to rough talk you guys for the next four hours. I'm going to take you ride down this train through Canapolis. We're going to listen to some Skid Row, some Poison, some Bon Jovi. But we're going to kick it off with Boston, More Than a Feeling. Hey, this was More Than a Feeling today. This was a this was great, great, great episode. This was great. I want to keep going, but I think Ben, who's been gracious behind the glass, uh, you want to talk about getting it done. That that, that gentleman there, he he makes us sound great. Mention their uh, studio. Though. Yeah, we, we, we definitely need three, it. Cat 3, isn't it? Uh, C3 Films, C3. Uh, Chris Kate, uh, the, the work that he does, Charlotte Touchdown Club, and, and and, and all of the initiatives that that those guys have done, uh, Lee Allen. You know, we couldn't do what we're doing right here without the the affiliation and working with these guys. So we want to definitely thank them um, and and just everybody that's made this part possible. Yeah, man, Chuck, you've been phenomenal. <laughs> that, I, is just, well, I loved it, and uh, I tell you what's a cool thing is when we come to town at night. We look up here and see the uh, own air yeah, light. Well, I love having that light on. <laughs> yeah. I really do. Yeah. I, I like That's as good a... as a hot now light. Oh, yeah. It is. That's it right. is. I'm going to drink a sun drop to that one. Yeah, me too. Oh, hey, yeah. Hey, yo, what's good? Right. Cheers. We got to do it. We got to do it. But thank you very much. Well, and yeah. I've totally enjoyed it. And I'm very honored to be here. And, and thank you for asking me well, to come Well, you're now a that. friend of the show. You've got a lifetime pass to come back anytime <laughs> you like. In fact, we're going to put you to work. We will get you a Rough Talk shirt uh, to get this thing going. Uh, cool. uh, but we're going to kind of put a bow on this. Ryan, anything? No, yeah. man, I'm good. This has been phenomenal. I've I just enjoyed this so much. Having somebody like Chuck here, I've known my, my whole life. I mean, I've known Chuck Irvin my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, my dad used to talk about him being the DMV guy coming yep. coming inspecting the trucks in the mill, and um, just what a good guy he was. And I mean, I've heard the name forever. So had an awesome life, and uh, I've had uh, wow. a great. Uh, a great uh, history of, of doing a little bit of everything. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you, buddy. Thank wow. you very much. Well, uh, for Ron, for Dr. Dave, uh, I'm Chris Hughes. Anything else, Ron? I think. No, I think that's it. But I, you know, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm going to uh, do one more thing. I mean, I, I think we're done with the talk, but we do have one thing. I, 
I was about to forget here because it's uh it's in this frame backwards, but uh, we'd like to present Chris with a honor from the state of Kentucky, actually. Wow. As uh, Governor Andy Bashir, and I'll just read this to all to whom these presents shall come greeting. Know ye that honor the Honorable Christopher Ryan Hughes is commissioned a Kentucky colonel. Awesome. And uh, wow. these these don't come very easy, but uh, you I don't know, know how that you, happened. <laughs> you, uh, this is wow. uh, very Colonel special Chris. to uh, to get these. Obviously, it's a it's really a kind of a lifetime achievement award of of being just a good guy, being a part of the community, and you know, of course, we're just starting with this part of our our wow. lives or our our efforts here. But I think this is very fitting for you to um, to get this and. I just wanted to wow. be able to present it to you today. Congratulations, wow. sir. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. man. Well deserved. Where are you going to hang it? I think in the office. In the, in the office. <laughs> in the office. <laughs> have you got any room in there? We don't have much. <laughs> yeah, and, and we've got, trust me, we got things we'd like to hang on that wall that we can't fit. I'll wow. bring you some memorabilia. Thank, Thank you. That'd be great. Man, 20 years of giving to the community. Who, who would have thought that, that they would have bestowed such an award? But. Uh, it's all the way from Kentucky. All the way from Kentucky. That's I didn't know they knew I existed in Kentucky. <laughs> Is that Kentucky's version of North Carolina's pine? Sort of, yeah. And and they, you know, years ago, the history of that is is that um, you would have special privileges to the Kentucky Derby and you know all that wow. sort of thing. But now, you know, they still give them out, and it's you have to be nominated and put in all the reasons and all that sort of thing. So wow, uh, and you have to be nominated by a fellow Kentucky Colonel. You can't just, not just anybody can can do can do it, and um, so of course Chris has been commissioned. Wow! Can I make so, you do push-ups now? No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call so, up my old army friends and say, "Hey, do some push-ups." So, so now I am done with the show. All right, guys. So, well, hey, for Doctor Dave, uh, for Ryan, I'm Chris. This is episode two in the books. Uh, I think I'm going to have another uh, water burger. What about you? I think that's good news. That right, sounds great. Yeah. All right, hey, we got to end it. Three for Dale. Three for Dale. All right.